Well, I want to give a little more uh, insight analysis. I know there's a lot of focus in on silver, and I'm deliberately doing a lot on silver because, um, you know, I'm putting out some things that other people are missing, and there's other ways you can read charts and graphs and interpret things, and, you know, what I, I think I'm putting out an angle that nobody else is actually putting out. Um, now, I can tell you one thing. <laughs> And I could be doing this right now too, you know, instead of YouTube. I do. I, I may not work too. I do other work besides YouTube, but uh, I, I could actually be going, uh, you know, balls to the wall on work like I used. To. And I am actually more or less on this type of stuff. But I like this better because it's carte blanche. I could put a lot of different uh, topics out on YouTube versus have to strictly strictly stay in accounting finance sector. But I can tell you when. Um, uh, I've probably been immersed in the accounting finance sector for I don't know how many years, many, many years. And most of the time, I would get back here at home at after midnight. Total into it. And you got to really be into it and have it like uh, almost like you almost have to be an addict into the numbers versus uh, just be thinking about money. It's like a competitive game to the max. So I like looking at other angles on other things too. And I think I'm giving you a unique uh, view of other things that other people aren't in some ways. And here I'm going to bring something else out. Real common sense. During the 1920s, how many people expected a stock market crash in 1929? I know that wasn't a major crash. Actually, the major crash was in 32, and there was another crash after that. But... You know, that was the big, that was the thing that kind of set off the beginning of the Great Depression. How many people expected that? Not many. I mean, vastly, the majority of people, vastly, people were saying it's never going to happen because we have the new technology, we have new process, new ways of uh, using machinery that we've never had before. There's going to be unprecedented prosperity because of the age, the industrial revolution that had started to occur in the 1800s, the late 1800s, and it's been vastly approved with uh, mass transportation, with the event of Henry Ford's uh, mass production of the automobile. Uh, everything was being manufactured instead of being built by hand. The war to end all wars was over with, so it was the age of prosperity. Nobody really expected it to happen, did they? And they were all caught by surprise. Now, I'm going to compare something else, too. Because if you look at, you know, what these guys are looking at. And actually, I think there's other people that really know what's going on behind the scenes. But if you look at construction numbers, construction is actually going up in the United States. And you think, oh, construction is just one area. But actually, construction, overall construction and the real estate industry, and it's corollary related industries are actually about 50% of the entire economy. So it really tells you a lot of what's going on. Now construction has been doing better the last, I would say since maybe the end of 2010, it's been going up. But you know what I'm also finding very interesting, so you're not putting the other facts together, is that, you know, we, we people look at like say the uh, stockpiles of gold. But you know, gold isn't used into construction, right? The stockpiles of gold are going down, as the price is going down. But you know what I'm finding interesting? The stockpiles of copper, which you call Dr. Copper, have been going down over for at least over a year now, which actually stockpiled and warehoused, including like zinc and lead. And now not aluminum. Aluminum is actually in big supply. And that's another major thing that's used in construction. But copper is a lot for the wiring and stuff. So if there's this mass See, why is it that, you know, if the warehouses are getting more pressure on them and the stockpiles are going down, why is not the price going up? The price, the price of copper has been going down the last couple of years. What's the deal? You know, it's telling me that something is not right with these numbers exactly. Maybe if we look at the details and you get down into details, you might find that Maybe it's construction, the overall aggregate numbers, yes, true, they're up, but maybe it's not going on with all the average small residential buyers. You see, there's not too many small residential buyers probably buying as much. Maybe they're just 
huge funded projects. Maybe these are projects that even if they're residences, they're mainly apartment building projects, even if it's for residential. See, that's what I think is going on here. Whereas the actual economy in the middle class is doing bad. And, you know, the other thing is if there is a lot of activity going on in construction, which is actually one of the most major portions of our real economy, how come, you know, we're seeing the copper warehouse volumes going down, we're seeing lead go down in warehouse volumes, not aluminum, aluminum's been very plentiful, but um, zinc and nickel, and these things are items are used in construction and industry, and why is not the price going up? You know, that's why I'm really smelling market manipulation going on here. But like I said, when it goes up, they'll manipulate it up beyond where it should go. And, you know, this is something else. Even though we could be looking at rosier construction numbers right now, you know, there's a, um old adage. You know, when were the most skyscrapers actually built? They were actually built during Depression times in high recession times and extreme recession times. Why is that? Because they were planned during prosperous times. So actually what I think was going on, we actually had for the last couple of years a false economy. And most of the um, money that's being pumped into the economy is going into uh, insider deals that are people that are actually interconnected with the largest banks and you know you can you could starve out construction projects in different ways you can actually you know just by not funding somebody or not if you actually and I don't want to comment too much on this I know there's a lot of inside things that go on in the financial areas of construction and when I'm talking not I'm not talking about little people now I don't want to call them little people like they're insignificant but I, I'm talking about stuff that's really big, some of the largest in the country, and there's basically a, a hookup there, a hookup there. Some people get it, some people don't. Some people got carte blanche access to funding, and you know what? That makes the difference, all the difference in the world. So sometimes when I'm looking at these um, construction numbers, and they're going up, and that may not mean that there's a healthy economy overall. That just might mean that there's insider construction going on. And uh, I don't want to comment too much on that because there's a lot of that that goes on. And uh, yeah, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have went off on that subject a little bit too much. But there is a lot of that. There is a lot of that that goes on. There's a lot of um, insider deals that go on and, and you know what it even goes on everywhere even in Japan in Japan and everything else too uh, even that way and it works hand in hand with the government too and the banking and financial sector so a lot of times even when we're looking at these numbers going up you know the other thing is like I said it does not make sense that construction is actually recovering the last two years but you're looking at the price of copper and other vital base metals and the warehouse volumes have been diminishing over at least the last year or so, especially in the case of Dr. Copper, which is an indicator of the economy in general. Yet we see the prices going down. You know, let's not just look at silver. Now, silver, yes, it's a precious metal, but you know what? It's an industrial metal. We know this, don't we? So what's the deal? If the economy is recovering, how come the price isn't being reflected upon the metals, the raw resources they need to produce goods and services for this robust economy that's supposedly going on. See, ergo, something ain't right, ain't right. But you know, I have to tell you this, there always has been a few insiders that had known at a time when a stock market crash was going to come. And you know, I sometimes say, you know, this might be wrong, but I'm going to say this, I picked up on one little factoid back in the middle of August of 2013 that George Soros put down a huge bearish bet on the S&P. And you know what? Obviously it hasn't played out yet, but that does not mean it will not play out. It does not mean it will not play out. You know, sometimes the headlines are there and it's, oh, 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 oh you know, and then, yeah, it's forgotten about. But, you know, I, I stick with some of those facts like that because... 
something is not adding up. If there was a lot of productivity in a healthy, robust economy, and we're seeing the uh, warehouse volumes of copper fall off like quite a bit, and uh, zinc, lead, and nickel for the last year, how come the price action is not going up? How come? How come? Like I said, also, construction activity of what's going on right now does not actually tell you what's going to happen in the future. You know why? You're looking at the past. You're looking at a curve that went up, that's going up the last couple of years. But like I said, a big indicator of when uh, of uh, recessions and depressions was when skyscrapers were built. Why? It's because the outlook was great when they were planned. So the outlook looks good for construction right now, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Something isn't adding up. Something's not adding up. So, uh, you know, I'm going to keep presenting some of these ideas out here because, um, you know, I want people to be patient with Well, do what you want, but I am patient with it. I'm patient with it because I know it's going to, it'll play out eventually. It'll definitely play out. But, you know, I'm not going to be afraid to sell silver when I think it goes too high. You know, that's the thing. I think it really is going to have its blow off real max top probably in 2017. But we're probably going to get this fake out before before 2017. It's going to do something exponential. And then you're going to see all the pumpers come out. And then it's going to crash again. And then make another. I think there's going to be a final run up a few years from now. That's what I'm expecting. And, uh, you know, that might be when we have all the... Uh, Things that they're talking about, the gloom and doom today, where the uh, dollar is going to be replaced as a world reserve currency. That's not going to happen right away. But it may happen in a few years. There's, more, there's a lot more, like say for instance, if you use the Chinese money, it, they have to do a hell of a lot more to replace the dollar. As Even if they're part of one of the world reserve currencies, they have to do a hell of a lot more. But I think it's actually going to be some other... Uh, World Bank Global Reserve Currency that's all fiat and backed by nothing but debt again. That's probably what it's going to be. You know, I think they would basically keep the same old uh, system in place. But, you know, I'm going to tell you, one of the main reasons, you know, this is one of the main reasons I have silver. It's because I'm opting out of their bullshit all the way. That's what it is. I'm opting out of it. So, you know... You have to, you know, it's not just a get-rich scheme. It's also, a, it's something where I look at it as you're not participating in the game, their game. You know, so that's just how I think. And, uh, you know, I'm more like a hands-on person, so I'd rather not even have something where I'm dependent upon, you know, an electronic system completely to hold all your money. I'd rather have the money physically. It is actually important to me that way, too. So, uh, you know, that's another thing that I look at it that way, too. But, you know, um, some things are not adding up with the numbers. But even if the numbers do add up, many times when there's an outlook based upon prior history, the outlook totally changes. Because you're looking back. You're not looking forward. You're looking backward. And you know, everybody's feeling it's safe now. But you know, maybe why these construction numbers have been going up the last couple of years is because of uh, special inside deals. And there's always been a lot of that going on. That I know about. I don't want to comment too much on that stuff. But I do know about that type of stuff. People have made some serious money uh, just by being connected. There's a lot of that goes on in the construction industry, big time. And... Uh, Something new isn't adding up, like I just want to add it, add it again, because if all the stockpiles, not just gold is going down, stockpile and gold, but copper's going down. The warehouse stockpiles is copper, zinc, lead, and nickel are going down, and the prices are dropping. Something isn't adding up. Something's not adding up. You see what I'm smelling? So, uh, you know, for the future, it looks like the commodities are the right place to be. For the past couple years, the equities were the right place to be. But that doesn't look like that's going to be the future. So uh, just want to present some other information, other angles out there. 
because uh, I can tell you one thing. Um, I will, uh, you know, I will spend a lot of time on researching things and looking at things in, on my angles, uh, and I think more so than some other people will. And I don't just get focused in only on silver. But I know, like, I'm talking about silver all the time. But the thing is, I want you to want people to look at the overall picture. You know, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen here? And like I said, the main reason silver is probably going to get to some astronomical, stupid high number is because of a panic. You know, the same reason people panic and buy, you know, some... Gorby dolls when they're freaking giving out Gorby or holy hoops or whatever. They will do some, people will, they could drive the price up that high. I hope I catch it right at the high. I really do. I really do. Anyway, over and out.